Now we move on to the subject of reasons for the corruption of Al Qatal. This is part A. After having defined the aims and conditions of Al Qatal, we finally need to explain the reasons for its corruption. That is, its erroneous application or false practice. Inasmuch as one can invalidate the benefits of a charity donation if it's done through illegal channels, or who you believe cancel not your charity by reminders of your generosity or by, by injury, and so on. Al Baqarah 264. A fight is corrupt and fails to fulfill its proper aims if it's done in violation of the, of the, of the book's injustice. This applies to all kinds of qatal, including the fight in God's way, mutual competence, uh, competition in self-defense for national security or political interest, for example, a political mandate over other country, etc., etc., like that, or the withdrawal from a battle from, uh, from troops or from deployment in the field, that is, the withdrawal from fighting, the offering of peace, the avoidance of excessive retaliation, the accusation of infidelity and other forms of fights. There are five things that makes a fight invalid. Invalid. One, O oh, you who believe when you meet the Kafirun in hostile Ari, never turn your backs to them. If any do turn his backs to them on such a day, unless it be in a, st a stratagem of war or to retreat to a troop, of his own, he withdraws on himself the wrath of God, and his abode is hell, an evil refuge indeed. Anfal 1516. These two verses are from the book's section of definite verses, Muhkamat, in Muhammad's Messengerhood Risala, that contain orders and prohibition. Both verses prohibit the Muslim believers, O oh, you who believe, from avoiding a fight in face if faced with an imminent attack from al kafirin the act of avoiding a fight is figuratively expressed as a turn of your back it is of course not meant to be literally understood as a physical turn of one's back because people may withdraw or retreat from a fight while still facing the enemy the term kafirun here does not have the specific meaning of infidels but point points in a more general way to everyone who starts a conflict every aggressor is a kafir whatever his religious is belief is seen from the side of the russians who who were attacked the troops of nazi germany were the kafirun as was the iraqi army of saddam hussein in the eyes of the people of kuwait moreover if we take the literal meaning of kafirun as infidels it has always been the case that the enemy is taken to represent the dark side of hearsay and unbelief while orthodoxy and correct belief is reserved for oneself. The text use of Kafirun is hence more than adequate to express this historical phenomenon. While invalidates any individual or collective fights in God's way is a manner of fighting that ignores the word of Allah, which wants to secure freedom, justice, and equality for all. Such a fight would be corrupted and could not be considered as a fight in God's way, it might still be a worthwhile fight for some other aims, but it cannot any longer be called a fight in God's way. God has purchased of the believers their persons and their goods for their return is the garden of paradise. They fight in his cause and slay and are slain, a promise binding on him in truth through the laws the gospel and the quran toba 111 the fight is mentioned in chapter 9 verse 111 is is such a fight it does not fulfill the criteria for a fight in god's way because a it promises the garden of paradise as a reward and b it is only required from the muslim believers not universally from all humankind such a fight differs fundamentally from a fight in God's way. For example, in the form of a nation's defense against an outside aggressor, because this latter would involve the whole nation and transcends religious, ethnic, and religion boundaries. In contrast to chapter 9, verse 111, the verse of chapter 8, 15 to 16, concern not only 
the Muslim believers, but also everyone and refer to a general situation of conflict and opposition to people who attack al kafirun We disagree with Ar-Razi, who, like any other executive who based his views on spurious causes of revelation, claimed that chapter 8, verse 15 and 16, refer to the battle of Badr. The conditional phrase, when you meet, at the beginning of of chapter uh, verse 15 implies a fullable condition for a situation in the future rather than a historical account of a specific event in the past which only starts with the verse 17 and not before the two verses are not a historical narrative but an instruction holding a general lesson similar to verse 45 of chapter 8 which also does not narrate even events from the life of Muhammad or his companion. The feeble historicism, the feeble historicism of the executives rendering of chapter uh, chapter 8 verse 15 16 reduces the audience of O you who believe to a handful of companions and al kafirun to a couple of thousand idolaters of the Banu Quraysh in Mecca which is given the verses universal significance highly unacceptable. A narrow his, uh, historicized reading of the verse, an example, believers against unbelievers, denies the possibility that a fight or even a war might take place, whereas both sides are those who believe. It. But where one side is called kafrun because it has started the conflict, which has indeed happened in history and still happens at the present time. Two, truly God loves those who, who fight in his cause in battle array as if they were a solid cemented structure and and obey god and his apostle and fall into no dispute lest you lose heart and your power depart and be patient and pers and persevering for god is with those who patiently persevere and fal 46. these two verses underline the importance of comradeship and the spirit of brotherhood not only on the battleground but also in all spheres of daily life the first verse uses the picture of a solid cemented structure similar to a well a well built wall to describe the fighters comradeship and mutual help they stand shoulder to shoulder in their fight against injustice we are told that this is what god truly loves it creates an association to a similar picture of people praying the salah prayer standing shoulder to shoulder in their prayer and forming one straight line uh, a solid wall of brothers in faith the opposite of such unity as the second verse says is to fall into dispute this is why we are told to hold fast all together by the rope which god stretches out for you and be not divided among yourself chapter uh, al imran verse 103 quarrels cause discord Discord causes friction, and friction will weaken the unit, united front of the believers, leading not only to disappointment and failure in, in the fight against injustice, but also to, the, the, to destruction of their own united front. We are told in the book that Pharaoh of Egypt was able to establish his tyrannical regime only after he managed to break up his people into sections. And that the reasons for the prophet's defeat at Uhud was disagreement about the aims of the campaign, the campaign, leaving huge holes in their walls of brotherhood and comradeship. Three, therefore, if they withdraw from you but fight you not and instead send you guarantees of peace, then God has opened no way for you to war against them. Nisal 90. As explained above, Al Qatar requires. A fight in which at least two sides are actively involved if one side withdraw the fight either ends it or if the other side continues to fight the two sides fight qatal turns into a one-sided fight qatal qatal one side is a qatal two sides is qatal as in verse uh chapter 4 verse 90 describes such a situation as do verses chapter 5 and tw verse 27 to 31 that the traditional narration cain's killing of abel in a fight that the book describes as unambiguously one-sided 
it is useful to distinguish between a forced retreat and a voluntary withdrawal from the fight. We are told by Osama bin Laden that whoever is not for us is against us and with our enemies, which is oddly enough mirrored by George W. Bush dictum that if any government sponsors the outlaws and the killers of innocents, they will become outlaws and murderers themselves. In fact, both fundamentally contradict the message of chapter 4, verse 90, which first allows human free choice in making the decisions to withdraw, and second does not expect them to fight until the bitter end, but allows compromise, resolution, and reconciliation. With number four, fight in the cause of God, those who fight you, but do not transgress limits, for God loves not transgressors. Baqarah 190. Also, there is the law of equality. If there, if then anyone transgresses the prohibition against you, transgress you likewise against him. But fear God and know that God is with those who restrain themselves. Baqarah 194. The first verses call upon the followers of Muhammad to fight those who fight them. But within the limits, Allah has said, because Allah does not love those who transgress him, his limits. In their exegesis of the verses, the scholars have made the following mistakes. A, eh? They claim things from the book that Allah never said by deliberating, misplacing the word within the verses or reading them out of context. For example, out of uh, chapter 2, verse 194, resulting in an understanding of Al-Qatal as offensive war. B, they ignore the fact that one of the following verses, chapter 2, verse 193, specifies the situation in which fight is in God's way is required. Let there be no hostility except to those who practice oppression. This requires the occurrence of injustice, which is confirmed by chapter 22, verse 39, because they are wrong. Hajj 39. A fight against wrongdoing requires the existence of a wrongdoer and the act of wrongdoing. Aggression is an act of wrongdoing, so is despotism. This means that there are different kinds of fight. Fight that wants unselfishly to end tyranny and fights that wants selfishly to defend and protect one's material, intellectual, uh, political, and other, other interests. Only fights for the former are fights in God's way. C. They misread another re relevant verse, chapter 2 of verse 190, through using the wrong variant reading of chapter 2, verse 39, that says, To those against whom war is made, thus is was written, permission is given to fight because they are wrong, and verily God is most powerful for their aid. Hajj 39. This has been understood as God's permission of self defense in the face of aggression. Or an attack. It has been overlooked that the phrase to those against whom war is made, yukatiluna, using the passive voice, yukatiluna, can also be read as to those who make war, yukatiluna. There's a big difference, yukatiluna and yukatiluna. Using the active voice, most executives have tended to accept the first reading, passive voice, yukatiluna. But given the people are attacked by an aggressor, does it really need divine permission to fight back? Certainly not, because the right to defend one's life, property, and land, and dignity is God-given. A natural disposition instilled into all of his creation, humans, animals, and plants, and does not need Allah's special permission. Just like other natural acts such as eating, drinking, breathing, sleeping, and procreating. Verse 194 of chapter 2 expresses the principle of Lex Talianus in a response to an act of aggression supported by chapter 545, verse 45. The phrase transgress you likewise against him implies restraint in one's response and the avoidance of excessive and unjustified brutality. A violent act of principle of equal retaliation makes any fight in God's way null and void. And it is also invalid this and it also invalidates a fight for any other reason. For example, in defense of a nation's security or the form of worldly struggles and contests. Five. 
Oh, you who believe, when you go abroad in the cause of God, investigate carefully and say not to anyone who offers you a salutation. You are none of a believer, coveting the perishable goods of this life. With God are prophets and spoils abundant. Even thus were you yourself before. Till God confers on you his favors, therefore carefully investigate, for God is well aware of all that you do. Nisa 94. This verse disqualifies unbelief as a legitimate reason for Qatar. This applies equ uh, equally to the context of Qatar as going abroad in God's way, or Qatar as seeking knowledge wherever you go, or Qatar as proving, providing for the family income, because if in the case of the, the latter two, the material aims and the pursuit of worldly interests supersedes Allah's orders and prohibition, such acts of Qatar cease to be in God's way, since they have become thoroughly corrupted. As for the way in, in which one talks to the unbeliever while traveling the world in God's way, the book urges us to speak fair to the people. Bakara 83. That is, in a soft, mild-tempered, and well-mannered way, and this applies to people of all religious schools and denominations. He does not forbid you to deal kindly and justly with anyone who, ha who has not fought you for your faith or driven you out of your homes. God loves the just. Mumtahana 8, verse 8. This verse demands us to be kind and just to the unbelievers. In stating its, its first qualification, who has not fought you for your faith, it stresses the principle of religious freedom and nonviolence in our fight in God's way. And in its second qualification, or, or driven you out of your homes, it stresses the necessity of establishing national security as well as the citizens' right to shelter and privacy. The ban to say to anyone who offers you a salutation, you are none of a believer, reminds every Muslim that before their conversation to the new faith, the first believer in Muhammad's message had all been unbelievers themselves, but their heart was opened by Allah's forgiveness and mercy. Hence, the prohibition to fight unbelievers on the basis of their identity, this is because, first of all, they enjoy the God-given right to choose whatever faith they want. Second, because Allah's forgiveness and mercy extends to His entire creation. Believers, hypocrites, and unbelievers alike. And third, it is Allah alone who knows the real extent of belief and disbelief, of sincerity and hypocrisy, of truth and falsehood. And it is He alone who will judge regarding the faith of the believers and the disbelief of the unbelievers. Those things, the last hour, the day of judgment, the books, the messenger, and angels must be left to him, while we better turn to the things that are left in our care, to act ju justly or unjustly, to tell the truth or lie, and so on. The five points that invalidate the fight in God's way are certainly not exhaustive. Many more things could be identified as corrupting the cause of Allah, but it is important to show that the encroachment of even one minor item of the principles given up previously which qualify a fight as a, a fight in God's way would make such a fight null and void and would remove any rewards that Allah has promised to give to those believers who fight him. Concluded remarks on fighting God's way is next. We thank you for following.